Well, I think it's about high time to go out there and review one of the players that has been on the trade block the past little while that we have already talked about, but one that we haven't updated in a while. Because when it comes to this name, it's apparent that there is now another team that is involved in these trade discussions, and you kind of already know from the title, from the thumbnail, you know which direction we're going with this. Today we are talking about Detroit Red Wings prospect, Jonathan Berggren. And I know prospect is a very loose way to describe this guy since he's already played a full NHL season. But Berggren is one of these interesting guys that, at the age of 23, as a 5'11", 194-pound left-handed winger signed to the end of this season, making $925,000, this is a guy who, despite playing a full season last year, getting 28 points in 67 games played, is in the AHL this year. And he's over a point per game, 34 points, 31 games on pace for about 69 points, which, you know, we had to go out there and say it. Good number, right? Very nice. But, in the small sample that Berggren had in the NHL, he had five points in nine games played. Now, you could say that there's some sort of an eligibility reason as to why Berggren is down. Oh, he's one of the guys that doesn't require waivers to get sent down, and with the amount of guys the Wings have rotating around in their forward group, you could debate that the need or the necessity for a guy like Berggren to be in the NHL is not really there. But... That is one argument of many to explain why this player, who is a young, talented prospect, has indeed been in the AHL, despite clearly showing that he is capable of playing at the NHL level. Now, last time we had talked about Berggren here on the channel, we made two videos. We discussed the idea that he actually could be on the move because he potentially could want out. Maybe he feels like he has more potential to show for at the NHL level that has not been really exploited. This was the trade update we had seen a month ago. We also made a video talking about the Montreal Canadiens and how they want this top prospect for themselves. Now, in this video, it's the third time we're bringing up Berggren's name, we're going over to the fourthperiod.com and reviewing their trade watch list of 2024. These are the top 25 names, according to David Peñota, that could be on the move, and the list is accurate as of January 28th, 2024. So, scrolling down over to the little segment that is listed over here for Jonathan Berggren, he is the 24th overall name on this list. As the fourth period's David Peñota reported in early December, the Red Wings have been dangling Berggren as trade bait and seem willing to move him in the right deal. His ELC expires after this season. Now, teams reportedly linked are Montreal and Ottawa. So, the Sens being involved here is a brand new discussion and one that I wanted to go out there and bring up. Now, when it comes to the... Montreal conversation, a lot of the same things that we had talked about in the last video, I think still apply here, that the Canadians, especially now that they traded away Sean Monaghan, they have spots on the roster that you could debate are up for grabs. If there are prospects in the 20 to 23 year old range that can play in the NHL and who could debatably use some extra development time with more meaningful minutes against tougher competition, you could very well say that Jonathan Berggren fits that identity. He's only 23. And he was drafted in 2018. So if you wanted to talk about guys in that 2018-2019 draft range, hey, you've got Berggren, you've got Kirby Dock who was in 2019, Newhook's 2019, Cole Caulfield is 2019. A lot of the guys at the end of the 2010s, the Canadians seem to value highly. So the idea of them going after a player like Berggren ain't too surprising when you consider what the Habs have valued. Now that Sean Monaghan is out, you've got Brandon Gignac, who has filled in that roster spot. So maybe if the Canadians get a little bit desperate, there may be some sort of an incentive to make this trade. Hey, there's a potential middle six center in Grand Rapids right now whom we could trade for and actually insert to our NHL lineup because he's good enough to play there already. Maybe Kent Hughes is thinking about it like that. But when it comes to the Ottawa Senators, you could very well say that a similar philosophy may apply. The Sens are in a position where they have some guys, too, that you could say they could be willing to shop. Vladimir Tarasenko, you could debate, could be on his way out. Claude Giroux, everybody's tossing out the hypothetical idea of him. And if you wanted to, you know, calm the fire down on Claude Giroux, please feel free to yell at me in the comments and say, Oh no, Claude Giroux is not for sale. Get off your high horse, Lego. That's totally fine. 
But similar philosophy applies here. If the Ottawa Senators want to try to maybe retool on the fly, capitalize on the players in the age range of the Brady Kachucks and the Stutzlas, then maybe a player like Berggren, who is already proven at the NHL level, is valuable here. And another reason why Berggren and Ottawa is interesting to talk about is because if you go over to this very same list on the fourthperiod.com and you look at the sixth overall name on this trade list, you have Jacob Chitrin of the Sens put on blast. It wouldn't be a trade deadline without Chitrin on the trade watch list, only now he's in Ottawa. Sens GM Steve Steos tried to calm the public waters, but as the fourth period's Dave Penyota reported on January 15th, the Sens are listening and willing to consider trading him. Teams reportedly linked include the Detroit Red Wings, and this actually is a deja vu conversation because we did talk about the idea of the Wings targeting Jacob Chitrin in a video just a few days ago. This was responding to those very same rumors saying that, hey, there are two guys on the fourth period's list that the Red Wings could want, Chitrin from the Sens and Vetrano from the Ducks. Now, if you go over to the same list, it says that Jonathan Berggren would be valued by Ottawa. So, put two and two together, and it becomes a rational question as to whether or not there could be a fit here. Could we see some sort of a Berggren for Chitrin trade? If you're talking it just straight up one for one, I'd say it's probably not likely to go down that way, considering the fact that, sure, while Berggren is a young piece that maybe has 40-50 point potential in the NHL as a middle-tier, second-line center-ish, Jacob Chitrin is already established as a very, very strong piece himself. A player who is a top four defenseman who could play maybe top two minutes if you really pushed him to, and who can produce points in the power play whilst being a very solid physical force. Chitrin has held value for years ever since his days in the Arizona Coyotes. So for the Detroit Red Wings, if you wanted to make some sort of a bargain for Chitrin swap, you'd probably have to add. Unless, of course, you are Steve Eiserman and you find yourselves a way to will a trade into existence that is in your favor from the get-go. I don't know what it is, but Stevie Y just happens to win trades consistently. And that reputation of his is so strong where it's like, yeah, teams' fan bases are kind of scared with the idea of trading with Stevie Y because it's like, yeah, we don't want to get fleeced. We don't want to send away our entire prospect pool for some expiring contract of a guy that's not even that good. Stevie Y is probably like the only guy in the NHL that could will that into existence. So if you're a Sens fan or if you're a Detroit Red Wings fan, what are your thoughts on the idea of a Berggren for Chitrin swap in whatever capacity. What are your thoughts on what the extra pieces would need to be from Detroit's side to make this equal? And if you're a Sens fan, would you be interested in getting a guy like Berggren? If he develops properly and he grows alongside the Kachucks, the Stutzlas, and the Norrises, he would fit right in in terms of that timeline, that window of success, and that window of prime hockey being accomplished by these guys. Berggren is right in that age range, so is this a guy you'd see value in? Because, of course, sometimes you have to go out there and fill the rest of your lineup too. It's not just shooting for the stars 100% of the time. Sometimes you need to get the guys to fill out the rest of your lineup, and that is what Berggren could be. Red Wings fans, let me know your thoughts in the comment section as to why Berggren is still playing in Grand Rapids and whether or not you'd think it's a good idea to trade him away. Do you think the Red Wings should try to stick the course out with him? Do you think there's some sort of an external factor here? Does Berggren himself maybe seek a trade? We had already talked about the hypotheticals and stuff in the prior video, so you can go ahead and listen to those if you wanted my opinions. But for now, this is the update. The fourth period's going out there and saying two teams are now involved in Berggren. Maybe there's some sort of a bidding war that happens soon. Maybe Montreal or Ottawa sees the other team's interest and they're like, hey, back off. And they start upping their own price and offering Stevie Wise something that he can't refuse. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Look how they massacred my boy. So let me know your thoughts if you're a fan of the Wings, the Canadians, or the Senators. What are your thoughts on Berggren and these trade rumors? I hope you enjoyed this British Rose 99. And... Bye.